It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to inspire. Our mission is to empower. And our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of those resources that are necessary to execute well, that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, in the building, we have the one and only Maxine Johnson. What's up, Maxine? How are you? I'm great, Shay. Good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you back. She's a returning person, by the way. This is not her first rodeo at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. She's always growing. She's always inspiring. And she's making a huge difference in the world. Now, I know y'all are reading her bio below. Okay, I get that. And I know you're Googling her. I get that. And now I'm going to ask her, what is this whole the making of a wife boss about? But first, can you define boss? What's your perspective on what a boss is? What's your definition on a boss? And why should we lean forward if you use the word boss that everybody uses by the way so i'm curious to get your view of the world when i think great question because a lot of people do utilize boss but in my mind when i think about boss i look at it from a perspective of being a leader a confident leader a compassionate leader a great listener as a leader but the biggest thing is a confident leader but yet compassionate leader because a boss sometimes can come out as being so authoritative but you can be confident and still have influence over those that you're leading. So that's my definition of a boss. Hmm. Now, you, we're talking about the making of a wife boss. So they're not quite a wife boss yet. They're in the making. Uh, give us the, the thought process behind this title and the conversation that the audience should expect that we're going to have because they're all curious. Yeah, the making of a wife boss is it started with me myself. So as I know, everything is not in the bio. But as you know, Shay, I wear a lot of leadership hats. I'm a pastor. I lead a lot of ministries. I'm also an HR professional who I uh, service a large company. I'm an entrepreneur, own my own business. I'm a speaker. So there's a lot of leadership hats that I wear. Right. And mm -hmm. what I found was I'm married. So I'm making huge well, congratulations. decisions. She, she, oh. she said that with a little authoritative. So she's like, I'm married. That was a big smile. You didn't say that when you said, I'm a pastor. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a minister. <laughs> I'm a leader. It was no excitement. You said, and I'm married. I'm like, whoa, okay now. <laughs> there you go. I should have started. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a pastor. I'm a, yeah, that's what I should have said by five, right? But the thing is, when you're wearing all of these leadership hats, and then you come home, you're making huge decisions out there, out there outside your home. But then I come home and then I had to adjust. And that was a huge adjustment for me, a huge adjustment to say to my husband, I'm like trying to make decisions. He's like, no, babe, the, the, you're not the end all be all. You're not out there. You're, this is not the company. This is not the organization. This is not the trustee board or you insert here of the people that I lead. So it was flipping. So I had to kind of morph and say, how do I become a wife? and be that compassionate, be that confident leader at the same time. But what happened was when we look at wife and when I started coaching women, they were like, I'm not married. I want to be married, but how can I, how do I learn this thing? Like I, I want to be able to have a supportive spouse or whatever that looks like. Right? So when I started to find what did all of these women have in common that I started to coach and what they had in common they were all women who were influenced they were focused and they were empowered and to do what to lead because we all are leaders in our own right whatever we are whether we are a, a sister whether we're an aunt no matter what that is so we all have leadership qualities and the whole idea was how do we draw that out of that woman of that person so that they can walk in their skills and in their leadership in their queenship in their queendom that's how it all came about. I love it. What do you say to the person that's listening and saying, okay, I'm with her. I'm curious on how she juggles everything because I too have responsibilities, right? So they're thinking I'm a mom or I take care of the kids or I have a husband or I have a significant other or I have a full-time job and I have a full-time entrepreneurship and I'm involved in the community and different organizations. And so Shay, before she goes down this long track, I'm just curious 
what is her secret sauce to being able to, to, to manage all these priorities that are all a priority number one? And, and I know you weren't going to talk about that, but maybe your, your share kind of like, you know, how you're able to do that because there's some busy folks that are watching right now and it's got to yeah. be on your mind. I think the biggest thing is you have to prioritize. It sounds weird, but you got to prioritize your priorities. So one of the biggest priorities, of course, if you're in a relationship is my spouse. So what I do is if I know I have a week, a busy week ahead, I'll say, here's what I got going on. Or do you have anything planned for this week? Here's here's my schedule looks like I share that with him and he shares his schedule with me. So I kind of keep it transparent. And I always, always, always make time for not only for my spouse, but also for myself. I'm no good. I can't help you if I'm good, if I'm no good. So I always try to make, I always incorporate some time for myself, no matter what. That's truly important so that I have the energy, that I have a clear head and a clear mind to be able to accomplish and do all of the other priorities that I am charged to do. So organization. Priority number one is making sure my spouse is on board. Priority number two, making sure that I put me time, Maxine time in that. And kind of having a, and I have it right here. I have like a little organizer <laughs> that I a actually write. Organizer? Every- is that a written organizer? Are people still I using a written organizer? Can, 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 uh, uh, what? It's not, it's not an app on the phone? That's a, ladies and gentlemen, I saw a written organizer. I did say it was a writing. It looked like a booklet with pages in it. <laughs> here it is. It is. <laughs> and a pencil. Look, and not a what? pen, a pencil. A pencil with an eraser on it. Why do you, why do you still feel writing it down? I mean, I'm just curious. It's not a right, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. So I'm not yeah. judging. I'm just curious. I know some folks gravitate towards writing things down. What's your thought process? Why does that work for you when you you write it on a piece of paper versus mm-hmm. typing it into a computer or something? I'm I'm just curious. Yeah. For me, um, if I use my phone or a computer, it's a distraction. With our laptops, we have we can go to different areas or like look at files or on my phone, I can look at different things. If something pops up, then I'm looking at that. For me, it's a distraction. But when I have it written out on um, paper, on a calendar, one, I can see it. So I leave it open to see what is going on in the month that I have. What are the goals I need to accomplish? And it also reminds me, write the vision, make it plain, write it down. You can see it. It makes it more accomplished. You want to accomplish it because to me, it feels good to check off and say, oh, yeah, I did do that. Okay, finish that. Or I need to move some things around and allow myself to be flexible and or say no to certain things because my day is actually booked because I do work. I am, you know, I work nine to five. And then I have to have that time for business and clients. So you have to really be, for me, to plan that out and have that written out and be able to see it is pretty important. That keeps me on task. We're all reading your bio below for sure. They're Googling you for sure. But you have this wife and it's, it's in all caps. And I'm curious, is, is it in all caps because you want wife to stand out, the making of a wife? boss or is it all a cast because there's some secret formula behind there uh so can, can you share with me please yeah i think the formula is that not everyone is every woman is married so the secret formula is that we are women the acronym for w women who are influenced they're focused and they're empowered and to help them do that and help them get there and how do i do that is that they go through steps to get what is inside of you, what is the passions, what are your skills or your ability, what are the things that you do that you don't even have to think about and kind of inspire them and focus to pull that out and to get them focused by helping them to prioritize and then empowering them and showing them that is with already within them to achieve those goals or whatever they need to accomplish. So yes, it is an acronym for women in influence and empower, and focused and empowered to do whatever it is that they need to do so that they can achieve the goals that they're looking to do. For those folks that are listening, myself included, wondering, you know, what do you look for when you're looking to partner or collaborate with other folks? Because a lot of things you're saying is part of a group, it's part of a collaboration, they're, they're pulling energy. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm not going to pick names of anybody, but I'll say this, picking someone to partner with or someone to collaborate with can be a challenge. It's been a challenge for yeah. me and I may be the only one in the world. So the question I have is, you know, what are one, two or three characteristics you look for when you're looking to partner with someone to have a support person? Uh, what do you look for in them? 
if that's a fair question. And then, you know, what are some things you're, you're looking to bring to the table? I think for me, the one thing that I like to see is um, to see if that person has some integrity. Um, and I, and with social media, you kind of follow, you don't just automatically see somebody say, oh, I need to partner. You kind of watch and see what they do. So I like to look at and see if there's some integrity that I can see. I like to see what outcomes that they have, what type of audience they have, what is their, what are their values? So are they compassionate? Are they about upbuilding, inspiring? So I kind of look at that. Those things are important. And the same for me, I want to make sure that one, oh, and the other thing, I know you said three things, but the other thing is that they really truly understand what partnership and collaboration means. Because some people want to use you just because of, and you know this, Shay, maybe your followers, maybe who you're connected to, and they just want to use you because, oh, you know so-and-so, oh, you know Shay Brown, so now I want to hook up with you so that I can kind of get into, so I, I don't need that energy, and you know discernment is real, so I kind of feel that energy if it's not really, um, you're, you're trying, you're using me instead of collaborating with me. And I've said no to several people um, to say, no, this is not for me or no, thank you. Sometimes I don't even give an explanation. I'm just, it's a, it's a no and a no is a complete sentence. But what I also bring is the same thing. That is truly a collaboration. How can we help each other out? Iron sharpens iron. So if there's something that I can do for you and you do for me, I'm not looking for anything in return. It's like a, it, it, what's in return is how do we help and serve our communities? How do we help and serve this world? How do we help and make change and influence change so that people can be their better selves? It's enough room out here for everybody to be great. And I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. That's why we're here sharing these and dropping these gems and sharing and exchanging information. But if we can do that and collaborate and partner that someone has the same thing, let's get it done. But otherwise, if you just want to be the superstar, I, that's a no. <laughs> I'll support you, but from afar. <laughs> you know, they're probably thinking, thanks for sharing. Maxine Johnson got it all together, Shay. Listen to this. Married, you know, has, has a career, taking care of the family, the kids. It's just totally perfect. Uh, was there ever a time, Shay, in her life where things weren't as perfect, where there was a hiccup, where um, there was some setback? And and what, what was it and what lessons did she learn? Did, I guess I'm asking the question that you would be comfortable sharing with the audience. And I'm saying that because we're going to be speaking to a group of folks right now where there's been some challenges. It, it ain't always, life ain't always been a crystal stair, as they say. No. Um, I'll just say one of the biggest challenges that I've learned um, especially being an entrepreneur and going out on my own and really taking a leap of faith is not planning. What it, What is that saying? Um, proper planning prevents poor performance. Yes. And when I didn't plan and I, I'm, I'm a true believer in investment and investing yourself, but I just, if, if it was nice and shiny and seemed like it could help me, I didn't pause and plan for it. I just invested and I lost a lot of money a lot of money, a lot of money to the fact that it was <laughs> ooh, a lot of money. And so um, I always say that what I've learned is, is that before you, uh, for me, before I invest in everything that's shiny and gold, is that I really have to sit back and see what the return on investment could be for me and my business. And you know, and you and you know some, you know my coach. And they, I learned this years ago, but I just had to, I had to experience it. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. I was told this by one of my former coaches who I love to death, and I, but I had to experience it for me. Like, oh, they did try to tell me that, but I didn't listen. So I think it's like everything you really have to sit and see how is it going to tie and really build your brand and your business because everyone has something to sell or something to give, but does everything deserve your money and your investment? So well said. Talk to the leaders now that are, are there in organizations. And these are women who are either in the C-suite, pursuing the sweet seat. They're mm -hmm. on that track. And they're listening to you right now saying, whoa, okay, Shay, I'm not an entrepreneur. Um, or maybe they are an author. Maybe they're an author, they're a speaker, they're a coach. But I also have a career track. And, and she mentioned she's an HR, Shay. So how does the making of a wife boss, what principles can, can I use to help elevate me in my career? And because some of them um, are leaders, uh, leaders of a yeah. team, uh, virtually leading and so forth. So I know I'm all over the map, but, but here's the question. Uh, what principles from the making of a boss wife 
can someone use inside of their career to make them not only a better leader, it's probably a two-part question, but to make folks around them, around them better as a team. Does that, does that, does that, does that make sense? I mean, I, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, it makes sense. I think one of the things, and this is, um, is there are certain skills that are transferable, but we have not really tapped into them because we don't understand how it transfers into being a great leader or in our career path. For example, if you're a mom or even to have a partner, the one thing that we learn in any relationship being a mom or a partner, you always wanna listen to hear what your child has to say what's going on and being an empathetic listener so that you can get to the goal or get their needs. But that's the same principle that can be applied when you are in your career. So you're learning, you're learning, you're being an empathetic listener. You're not always speaking up just to say something or have something to say. And you're learning from other people and taking in that information. So it's, it's twofold. You're taking in the information you're listening, empathetic listening. And here's the other thing. One thing is that um, don't be afraid to, and this is where I talk about being focused and empowered. Don't be afraid to say yes to something that you may have been scared to do before. So if someone asks you, we have this big project, would you be, you know, can you lead it? And you're like, I've never done anything before. That's what you may be saying in your head. But if you were asked that, then they saw something in you that you're able to achieve it. Figure it out later. You can do it. And so if they ask you, there's a skill in you, there's something in you, you just have to have that confidence and be empowered to do it. Because sometimes you got to do the job before you get the job. People want to see how you do. The other thing is, even if you're not asked, if there's something that you want to do, volunteer. You might not get paid because, well, here's what we do sometimes. Well, they're not going to pay me no extra money, then I'm not doing it. Well, sometimes you got to do stuff for free so that people can see you. And if they see you, your outcomes and what you bring to the table is more valuable than any bonus or anything that you have because your name is already out there and you can add it to your curriculum vitae or your resume to say, this is what I implemented, developed, and I did that and your name is all over it. It's your legacy that we have to be willing to step out and do something and do something different. If we're staying in the same zone, we, we're we going to be in the same zone. But when you're willing to do something different, it's the same thing. We've done it in our homes. You might want to change the color and say, oh, I just want to try something new at my house. Try something new. It's all right. But how else would you know if you don't step out? How do you find the courage to expand your comfort zone? A lot of what you're talking about is going to be uncomfortable for a number of folks, right? So they got to expand their comfort zone, but they understand that it's within their grasp. And I say that because yeah. for those that find her on social media, um, you'll see she's she's constantly working out and she'll post a picture. It don't matter what she's doing, like what? And it's so cool, but she has the courage and the confidence to be able to do that. So 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 a two part question. Number one, uh, where's that courage and confidence come from? What was the genesis? of that for you to expand your comfort zone do things that are uncomfortable and number two what's the recommendation you have for those folks out there because the making of a boss wife you got to have the making of a boss you know husband at some point i'm sure uh you know because we got to do the exact same thing it, it, it means doing things that are uncomfortable i guess that's why they call it comfort zone but anyway um what, where's that courage <laughs> and confidence come for you to do things that's uncomfortable uh um i i will say it didn't happen overnight Okay. Um, and I'll say when you, it, it, because I was very uncomfortable for a long time and even starting my own business was very uncomfortable because I was afraid to fail or even afraid to succeed. Cause it's like, how can I handle, you know, success? And I don't want to be all out on, on social media. It was a lot to contend with. But what I realized is that the lives that you touch and you don't know, it could just take, it just takes one person to be inspired. And so you don't know who you're inspiring by sharing your story, by sharing whatever it is and stepping out. And how would you know how much stronger you are, how much better you can be unless you tried it? Because if you don't do it well the first time, then you can try it again. And so what, to build that confidence, it happened over time. It happened through, through several things, trial and error, having a great coach and having accountability partners that understood that you could say, I'm, I'm scared. I, I don't know what to do. 
or someone that's going to keep you on task. So those things really help me kind of move me along. I know you have mm. a part, second part. What was the second part? Oh, my no, no. you can answer uh, confidence and courage. Where did that come from? And then what are some someone can do to really expand their comfort zone? Because although you were scared, you still kept taking action. And, and, and that's yeah. the part I was hearing. It's like, you know what? I was scared, but I did it anyway. Not recklessly, but you did it anyway. So you did answer yeah. the question to me. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> You know, on this journey of life, this is one of the favorite questions I love to ask. It's, it's one I wait for because to me, we all can benefit. Doesn't matter what level you're at, no matter your age, your income, your social status, you can benefit from this. And that is of all the mentors you had on this journey of life, and you've had so many mentors, what's one mentor and one of the lessons you learned from that mentor that you now have held as a value to yourself but you're going to pass on to us the audience and you, the audience, you get a chance to lean in because uh, this is the part of the show where, you know, you get to hear something that was near and dear to this individual and maybe you adopt it and you use it for the rest of your life or maybe you listen to it and it inspires you. Yeah. I've heard this um, early on in my career as an HR professional, very early on. And what's so weird is that I didn't really practice it or take action um, until much later after I heard it. What it was, it was a uh, chief HR officer, and they said, in order to grow and develop and get noticed, do a job that no one wants to do. I didn't understand it, but it wasn't the fact that no one wanted to do the job. It was the fact that you have to step out and do something that you don't want to or you're afraid to do. And so how do you get noticed is that when someone says no and this is what i was saying before taking that action that no one's like no i won't volunteer i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that and you said i know i can but you're afraid just take the action and say yes so say yes to something that no one wants to do um, and that has really stayed with me because when you do the job first then you'll get the job and that has stayed with me for many many over 20 years Hmm. And someone in HR, that's something that you've gifted. Not only you've witnessed yourself, but you've seen on the other side, uh, you know, yeah, do absolutely. more than what you paid for today. And one day you'll be paid for more than you do. I guess that's the old saying. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm trying to be on the other <laughs> side as fast as I can. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> let me, let me stop. Let me, let me stop. Let me uh, be serious. When you're not out saving the world, which you do constantly, what does Maxine Johnson do for fun? Oh, what I love to do, I love to travel. So um, um, I love the islands, anything with blue now, water. You, you can't leave us there. You got to let us know where you like to travel. You can't just say, well, I love to travel. Everybody's like, where? Okay. where? Well, or what was one of my favorite places to go? Like, uh, you, you can't just see. leave I, us hanging. Listen, I love I, Cozumel. I love Cozumel. I love Jamaica. Um and I'm looking to go to Antigua. I'm looking any, I'm just hitting all the islands and uh, anywhere, I'll just say this, anywhere there's blue water and sandy beaches and someone I can say, can you get me another <laughs> something else to drink and I don't have to move. I am in my glory. That's, that is what I love for fun. I am not a go on vacation girl. Let's take, do all these adventures. No, I just like to sit and just yeah. chill that is I'm, I'm excited even talking about it <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear your voice i've been to cosmere i love it i love mexico i just I, I love it so i'm just listening to it like whoa that's cool that's kind of where i am man i'm gonna say y'all's gonna be near the water yeah for now I, i'm okay with that okay i don't have to go exactly. hiking through the woods that's just not my jam i'm saying something's wrong with it it ain't my jam so wow it that's, that's kind of cool <laughs> i'm glad you like to do that we we have a segment here called today is my January 1st. And for those folks who tune in daily at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and follow us on social media at, at I am Shay Brown for the Happy Entrepreneur Show, you might have heard this before, but here it is. You can say these words you wait to say every night. Today is my January 1st. And for those new viewers that are joining us for the very first time, welcome. We're glad to have you a part of the family. Today is our January 1st is our personal mantra. And what it stands for is that you get a do-over. Today is my January 1st means you get a fresh start. It means that no matter what's happened, your past, no matter what it is, no longer equals your future. That today, in fact, is your January 1st. Happy New Year. You don't have to wait till December 31st on the back of a napkin at 11.59 to say, you know what? I'm all in. No, it happens now. So my question to Maxine Johnson on the other side is when you hear those words, today 
is my January 1st. What do you hear? And what are your words to inspire or to encourage folks that are listening? When I hear today is my January 1st, I hear reset, refresh, renew, and just get things going. And the thing with that, when I say a January 1st, is that that's the reset button and go for it. That's what I say. Now, here's the thing with January 1st is that it is a freshing, it's a renewing. And beyond January 1st, always remember what you committed to on January 1st so that on February or whatever, you're still committed to whatever you said on January 1st. That's where we fall off thereafter. But always remind yourself. And that's why I love about this is because when you talk about today is my January 1st, it's a reminder. It's always a reminder of what you set yourself out to do. Mm. How can folks best connect with you? As we come down the home stretch and what type of clients, if any, is your firm taking on these days? Yeah, the best way to connect with me is you can let's connect on uh, social media at on IG at Maxine L. Johnson, Maxine L. Johnson on Instagram. That's probably the best way. And it has all my information there. That's the best way to connect with me. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I love to see who's out there and how we all potentially could collaborate or even let's just see how we can help each other out. The second thing is, is what I'm doing. I'm still doing coaching, uh, career coaching. And actually, Shay, uh, when you talk about today is my January 1st, I actually embraced being an HR consultant. I tried to run away from it. I've been an H uh, HR a manager and HR professional for over 20 years. And I really tried to run away with, from it, but it's just started dropping on my lap. And I just really said, okay, I'll start accepting clients as HR consultants. So I've been an HR consultant to small business owners that do, they don't have policies in place. They don't have procedures in place and they have nothing, but they don't even know how to interview and not ask <laughs> They ask uh, interview questions that could be deemed illegal that may cause them some pain later. So I'll help them with that as well. So that's what I've been doing and that's what's been new. So still doing career coaching, life coaching, and now HR consulting. So with all those skills that I had, just sharing it with the world. Well, I want you to know that uh, you're amazing. I certainly appreciate you being here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. So thanks so much for being on the show. We know you can make more money, but you can't make more time. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Shay, for having me. Good catching up with you. You as well. And thank you. Thank you, the viewer. Thank you, the person that tunes in daily at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, whether you watch us live or you tune in on any of the platforms. You can find us on podcasts on all the on-demand streaming platforms. I want you to know that you, as you're watching, you're awesome. No one's told you that recently. You're amazing. I know you say, Shay, every night you tell me, no, you are amazing. And for right. you, today, in fact, is your January 1st. And because of that reason, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, by the way, in case you forgot, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this though, time is long. Life, on the other hand, well, it's very, very short. So you got to live in the moment. You got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. Thanks a lot, Maxine. I appreciate you. You're incredible. Peace, everybody. We out of here.